Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I wanna to talk to you guys about classes and objects in Python. Now, classes and objects are extremely useful in Python programming, and they can help you to make your programs more organized and more powerful. So when we're in Python, we're dealing with all types of data, right? And a lot of times when we're writing programs, we're gonna to have to work with different types of data. And there's essentially like a few basic types of data we can deal with, usually things like strings, so like plain text, numbers, and Boolean values. So those three are kind of like the main types of data that you're gonna be working with in Python. And we have all sorts of structures we can use to store that data, you know, things like lists or dictionaries. But here's the problem, is that not all information, not all data, not all things can be represented using strings, numbers, or Booleans, right? There's a lot of things in the real world that we can't represent in something like a string or, a, or just a number, right? In other words, something like, think of like something like a phone or a computer or a person, right? You can't really represent those things in like a string or a number, you know? In other words, like the data types that we have available to us in Python can't cover that. And so what we can do with classes and objects is we can essentially create our own data types. So I can create my own data type for anything I want in Python. So I could create like a phone data type and it could represent a phone. So I could store all the information I would ever wanna know about my phone inside of that data type. And in Python, we could create a class for it. And essentially what a class is, is it's just saying, hey, here's another data type that we wanna use in Python. So with a class, you can essentially define your own data type, and it's super awesome. And classes are extremely useful. Classes are used in almost every single major programming language out there. So in this tutorial, I just wanna give you guys a basic introduction of classes and using them inside of Python. So let's say that I'm writing a program and I want to represent a student inside of this program. So maybe I'm writing a program for like a college or a university. Let's say that in this program, I want to model a student. Like I want to model a real world object and I want it to be a student, right? Well, we don't have a student data type and I can't really represent a student in just a single string or a number. So what I can actually do is I can create a class for a student and I'm basically creating like a student data type. So I'm gonna show you guys how we can do that and create our student class. So over here, I'm just gonna make a new file we'll just make it a new Python file. So I'm just gonna call it student.py. And inside of this student.py file, I wanna create a student class. So the way that I can do that is just by typing class. And now I wanna type the name of the class that I wanna create. So in our case, we're gonna create a class called student. So I'm just gonna say student, and now we're gonna make a colon now everything that goes inside of here is going to be inside of our student class. So everything that's indented like this will be considered a part of our student class. And basically what we can do inside of this student class is we can define a bunch of attributes about a student. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm like modeling a student. I'm creating our student data type. And I can use things like strings, integers, and Booleans in order to map out what a student should be and what a student should have. So I wanna create something called an initialize function. And the way I do that is just by typing out DEF, and I'm just gonna type two underscores, and then the word INIT, and then two more underscores. And you also wanna type out open and close parentheses, and inside of those parentheses, we wanna type out self, and then we wanna colon after that. What I can do inside of this initialize function is I can basically map out what attributes a student should have. So we can essentially define like, hey, here's the student data type in Python. So what I wanna do is add in certain attributes after this self. So I'm just gonna say self, a comma, and now we can start thinking about, you know, what values will represent a student inside of our Python program. So if I'm thinking like, I'm thinking something like name, right? So every student in our program should have a name. They also might want to have a major because they're in college. They probably also will have a GPA. So their grade point average, like how they're doing in school. And let's define one more thing. Let me think, why don't we make a Boolean and it's gonna be called is on 
probation. And this will basically tell whether or not the student is on probation. So essentially what I'm doing inside of this initialize method inside of this init function is I'm defining what a student is in our program. And so in this program, a student has a name, it has a major, it has a GPA, and it has a value that determines whether or not it's on probation. This right here is the student data type. So if I'm representing a student inside of my program now, it has all of these attributes associated to it. And that's basically what I'm doing up here. Now, inside of this initialize function, we actually have to do something. And basically what I want to do is um, assign some values. So I'm going to be writing out some stuff and this might not make total sense right now, but this is going to make sense in a second after we create our first student object. So just stick with me right now and just basically know that we have to do what I'm doing over here. So I'm just going to say self dot name is equal to name. And then I'm going to say self dot major is equal to major self dot GPA is equal to GPA. And I'm going to say self dot is on probation is equal to is on probation. So again, this might not make a whole lot of sense right now, but in a little bit, this is going to make total sense. So now that I have this student class defined, I can actually use this class inside of my other files. So I'm going to come over here into this app.python file, and this is just my main file. And so I actually want to create a student, right? So in that student class, we defined the student data type. And we basically said like, hey, a student has a name, a major, a GPA, and it says whether or not they're on probation. That's like the template for what a student is. But we can actually create a student. So we can create an actual student and give it some information. And that's called an object. So this student class over here is basically defining what a student is. So a class is just like an overview of what the student data type is. An object is an actual student. So it's an actual student with a name, a major, and a GPA. It's not just this template anymore. It's actually like a student that we're representing inside of our program. So in order to use that student class and create a student object, I actually need to import that. So all I have to do over here is just say from student, and this is referring to this student file. I can say import student. And basically what this is saying is from the student file, I want to import the student class. So even though these are both student, they're referring to different things. So this is referring to the file and this is referring to the actual student class. So now that we did this, we can create a student. So, so you can create an object of a class a lot like you would a normal variable. So I can just give it a name. I'm going to call this student one, and I'm just going to set it equal to student. And I'm going to make an open and close parentheses. And now inside of this parentheses, I want to give this student a name, a major, a GPA, and an is on probation value. So I'm going to say, we'll just create a fake student. So I'll just say his name's Jim and he's studying business and we want to give him a GPA. So maybe he has like a 3.1. And finally, we want to say whether or not this student is on probation. So why don't we say false? So basically what I'm doing is I'm saying that I want to create a student. So I want to actually create a student object. And remember an object is just, an instance of a class. So the class is like an overall template. It defines what a student is, but an object is an actual student with actual information. So we could call student one. Now this is a student object. So I just want to show you guys what this student object actually is and what we can do with it. And then I'm going to talk some more about that init function from before. So over here, I'm just going to make a print statement. And inside of here, I just want to print out student. And what's cool about this student one object is I can actually access each of the attributes from inside of this object. So if I wanted to get the name of the student, I could say student one dot name. And now this is actually going to print out the student's name. So over here, you'll see it prints out Jim. If I wanted, I could print out the student's GPA and it's going to print out the student's GPA 3.1. 
So now that I created this student object, I can actually access the information about the student. So essentially, I've just created a student data type. So I could create as many of these students as I wanted. If I wanted, I could create another student. We could call it student two. And essentially, we do the same thing. We just give it different information. So we could say like Pam and her major is art and she has like a 2.5. And let's say that she is on probation. So now I have another student, student two. So if I wanted, I could access information about that student. We could say like student two.gpa. And now this is giving me the GPA of student two. So basically what I did was I created a student data type and I created student objects and now I'm able to represent a student inside of my program. So let's talk real quick about all this stuff over here because I didn't really explain it. Basically what's happening is when I come over here and I say student and I'm passing in all of these different values, those are getting passed into this init function. So remember I passed in a name, I passed in a major, I passed in a GPA. When we create that student, we're actually calling this function. And when I pass in the name, the major and the GPA, those values are actually getting stored over here in this name, this major, this GPA, etc. Right. So I'm giving this student object all of that information. And down here, what I'm doing is I'm saying self dot name is equal to name. And basically what this means is the actual object's name is going to be equal to the name that they passed in. So self dot name is an attribute of student. Right. So the student is storing a name. The student is storing a major. The student is storing a GPA. But that's different from this name, this major and this GPA. Remember, these are all just values that I passed in. They're just parameters. And so I need to take the values that I passed in and I need to assign them to the actual attributes of the object. So I need to say, OK, the name of the student is going to be equal to the name that we passed in. One more time, the name of the student object is going to be equal to the name that we passed in the name of the student's major is going to be equal to the major that we passed in. The student's GPA is going to be equal to the GPA that we passed in. That's basically what's happening here. So when I say self, it's referring to the actual object. So over here, when I'm creating this student object, I'm giving it all of this information. It's taking that information and storing it as attributes for the object. So hopefully that makes sense. I think that's about as clear as I can make it. But the point is that now we have a student data type. So now I can represent a student inside of my Python program. And that's like super powerful. And what's cool about classes and objects is you can do this with anything. So in this example, we created a student class and then we created student objects off of that. But I can model any real world entity into this program. I can model something like a phone or I can model like a water bottle or I can model, you know, a keyboard, right? I could model anything that I wanted inside of my program. I could just give it certain attributes, right? And so that's what's cool about classes is we can model real world objects and we can create our own data types. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.